I come terribly on the pictures, you know, with my outstanding ears and my my big nose and my I'm not a, not a good subject of photography, but. This is Fred Brill. Born in the free state of Danzig during the early 1920s, his father worked in transportation, overseeing imports and exports along shipping lines over the Baltic Sea. By the time Fred was in his teens, the Nazi regime had begun to march over Poland, forcing his family to flee to Warsaw, then Italy, and eventually through Yugoslavia, Greece, and Turkey to the Near East, where Fred and his brother Richard joined the Free Polish Army. That was 1942. Flash forward to 2015. Mr. Brill is now 91 years old. The war changed him physically and mentally. He lost all hearing in his left ear and all sense of smell, and also sustained numerous pieces of shrapnel in his hip which cause chronic pain to this day. Though some of his views on life have become solemn, he still remains a hopeful man. He faced some of the most destructive years of human history and still came out on the other side. Today he is one of the few remaining veterans of World War II one of the last living perspectives of that time, of that war. I spoke with Mr. Brill not just for his perspective on the war as a soldier, but his perspective on life and as a human being. With this documentary, I hope to show not only who Mr. Brill is, but to communicate his beliefs to the world, to show what he values and what he hopes for our future. If you consider this fact that in the Second World War, of course, everybody has to be 90 or above 90. Yeah. And there are some people who were a little younger, but I was one of the little younger ones. 15,000 of us are dying every month. I saw enough things done in the war that it makes me think that in 21st century, people must find something else than murder themselves and murder the innocent children and women and people who are not combatants. I hope that you young people will come up with something which is smarter than the atomic bomb. You have to be able to get yourself involved and you know that uh, you have to respect other cultures too. The Warsaw was bombed by the Germans. It was a lull between two bombing and they had the signals. So people started to go out from those almost completely ruined houses. I went with my brother outside and uh, we helped a couple of people to go out of the win window. Couples of elderly ladies, elderly, they might have been in thirties. But for us we were old because we were youngster. My brother was was 17 or 16. Anyway, we helped out those two ladies out. My father was quite a guy. When Poland was occupied and, and he has the guts, he says, look, we knew that we're going to wind up in a death camp sooner or later. So, with the embassy, Italian embassy, wanted to help us. So he says, well, you know, let them take us to the nearest railroad station and then we'll make our own way out of the, out of uh, occupied Poland. Mm -hmm. He had guts. When I first came to the United States in 
1949, I went for a walk in the Central Park. And there was a couple moving and speaking Polish. So I stopped them and said, excuse me, I'm kind of lost in here. Can you show me the easiest way to get to the nearest subway? So of course they told me. But the lady told me, you know, I had a son who was also in the Polish army and he was also in Italy. And uh, his name was Koral. And my wife's my new. And they invited me to her, their house. I went over there, I met the daughter that they had. And the daughter was the young lady that I helped out of the window in Warsaw in 1939. I always say to people, I don't buy green bananas, but this is a saying that a friend of mine coined, you know, I can go tomorrow.